Hey guys, welcome back to the shop for another episode of Shop Talk. So after the episode where I talked about taps, I believe it was 21 maybe, I had a lot of people that made comments about me making another Shop Talk on, on dies. So that's what this episode is going to be about. And the reason why I was waiting until this point to do this is because I wanted to actually have a job to do a little bit of thread repair on. And I have these two guys right here. This is the tapered pin out of the Shaper clapper box. And it's got some mushroom threads right there on the very end that I need to take care of. All right, and we also have this stud right here. And this is the stud that screws into the, the tool slide and holds the clapper box in place, okay? It also has some mushroom or flared out threads right here on the very end that needs to be taken care of. So I was gonna talk about dies, thread dies, when I had something to do, uh, but funny enough, we may not even use the thread dies to do these repairs, and I'll tell you why. So there's two basic types of threading dies. You have hex dies like this, okay? And then you have round threading dies like this right here. This is die that's in the handle and these come in many different sizes you have very small die handles and you have you know larger ones like this even even larger than this you know they have pretty good size dies so here is a little bit better look at what a round die is and these are actually adjustable they have a they have a screw there that you can adjust these things now i personally i think it's pretty rare that you ever adjust these things when you buy them they should be set from the factory alright and these are designed to cut threads round dies are for cutting threads now I'm telling you what I was taught by my dad okay round dies are for cutting threads you can use them to chase threads but they're for cutting threads your hex dies these are not to be used to cut threads so you don't want to take one of these in a piece of round stock. This is inch and an eighth seven. I just use this as an example because it's big, easier to see. But you don't want to take an inch and an eight rod and try to turn this on there. You know, you usually use a wrench for these. You don't want to cut threads. These are for chasing threads, okay? That's the important thing to remember between round dies and hex dies. Round is for cutting threads hex is for chasing threads okay now I don't know if anybody out there is going to disagree with me but those are the rules that I've always lived by and it actually holds up to be true a while back of many many years ago we let a friend of ours a good friend borrow the 9 16 hex die he asked if he could borrow one because he didn't have one so yeah I'll let him have it uh, to borrow well when he came back he came back with a brand new hex die <laughs> in this package right here. And the reason why is because he ended up breaking it. He was trying to thread some bar, some uh, 9 16 bar. I don't know what he was doing. Now, this was years ago. But he ended up breaking it. It, like, broke in half, you know, because it just, they're not made to withstand that kind of tool pressure, you know. So, a uh, good friend as he is, he bought a new one and then delivered the brand new one to us, which was really cool. So, just a that's all you really need to remember about which one to pick is if you're gonna cut threads like a lot of guys make adapters for these round dies to go on a tailstock on a lathe I've seen different ways that you can make an adapter that clamps around to the quill and they use the tailstock to cut threads that's a poor man's way of doing some threading on a lathe okay using dies anyway you don't want to do that with a hex die just use these for chasing threads all right, so with saying that, we've got these two guys here that I want to do some thread chasing. And the, the funny thing about trying to use a hex die to go and chase a boogered up thread like this right here is that a lot of times it's not just the thread that's down in here. It's the very end where it's been hammered on and mushroomed and it's swelled out and it's extremely difficult to get a hex die started I actually got the right one here. This is a three-quarter ten. This is a three-quarter ten hex die right here. 
And when it's mushroomed out on the end like that, it's really hard to start this because you just can't line it up and you can't get it started. Now that might start right there, okay? But oftentimes it tries to cross thread or it goes on there crooked because it cannot line up with a thread because of the, the root of the thread is so swelled out, it's not lining up right, okay? No difference with uh, a round eye if you was try to use a round eye for that as well. So what I'm probably going to use to try to chase these threads right here is one of my granddad's and my dad's Buckingham thread chasers. So these are these are two, I don't know if it's two different sizes or what, but uh, these, these can be very, very useful. And you adjust them. You have a roller in there that lines up in the thread and you have a couple of guides and these things are flexible inside there they're kind of mounted in rubber you have one side that actually does the chasing the cutting and the other side is a guide that slides through the thread so you can just stick your material your workpiece through there so this one may not be let me try yep it'll fit okay so you just stick it through there and run this guy up and just get everything lined up well and then you go around and you chase your thread now I need to do this in a bench so I can hold it firmly and put enough pressure on this thread chaser right here but I've got these in different sizes I've even got these things up to uh, you know I don't know probably four inch or so and I took that one to work because it's useful in hydraulic cylinders but a good useful tool to have in the toolbox and I've used these many times. So with saying that about hex and round eyes, uh, let's go ahead and see if we can get these, twos, these two threads chased so that the nuts fit properly. All right, there's our thread clamping the vise. See if we can get this guy lined up the way it needs to be. Went to grab my glasses. And I'm actually going to use the hex die as sort of a gauge see see it's not wanting to go on there there we go now we're getting somewhere now we're getting somewhere it's it started so now we're making use of our hex thread chasing die and hopefully this will cut it back to its proper size that it should be at as you can see what I mean by sometimes even having these these thread dies here doesn't really help you very much because you can't get the thing started so having those other thread chasers is a nice tool to have as well. But these things are very useful to have. I'm not saying that they're not worth having around. Uh, sometimes you have a messed up threads further down from the start. And that's where these really shine. Because you can screw them down on there. And it cleans the thread up. Still going to be a little snug right on that very tip there. That's just a regular old three-quarter nut out of the bin right there, but that'll work. This one's got some 
it looks like Loctite or something down in there. But there's an example of using an, uh, a hex die right there to help get your parts back in order. And I'll go ahead and uh, off camera, I'm going to go ahead and run run it down on this side just, to, just the same and make sure that these are all cleaned up too, okay? Now for this next one, I got a chase here. This is a tapered pin and it's a precision it's a precision fit, so I don't want to mar this up by trying to chuck it in this uh, vise right here. So what I'm going to use is the actual taper fit in the clapper box right here. So what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and stick it through there. And I'm going to go ahead and grab my, we'll use this little lead right here. We can go ahead and tap it in there so that it's nice and snug. That should be enough to hold the pin from spinning and I'm not messing up the surface there so let's use the same one make sure that the arrows on the upside go ahead and put a little drop of oil there I'm going to use one of these new uh, flange nuts that you would use like on the mill. We're going to chase it one more time with this and then I'm going to get the uh, hex die and see if it'll screw on there. We need to give this thing a nice bevel on that end. It's just got too much flare there where it's been hit on. So we're just going to dress it on the sander. All right, another note, <clears throat> I took the file and rub the top of the the threads down just a bit and i think i got the die started by hand put a little drop of oil there it's really cutting some metal there I want to make sure that I'm not cross threading it. This is what I'm talking about when the ends are flared. But I think I'm doing good. It, uh, it's just following it, so let's go back on there with it. That's how much that thread was flared. Look at all them chips coming out. I don't know why it was beat on the end of that. The way that you would remove this pin is you, you back the nut off and then you take and you tap the end of the nut, not the end of the thread. All right, let's go ahead and back it off there. I think we finally got her now. Okay, there's our Here's our new nut. Just like it was made for it. That's a perfect fit right there. All right. All right, guys, there we have it. Two repaired threads that we used our hex die. That's a really beautiful fit right there. And the stud is still a little bit snug on this uh, die right here, which is typical. But I got to pick up an, another one of these in the three-quarter ten style for this stud. I haven't got one around here. All right, so there's a, a quick use of a hex die. And remember, 
whenever you're using your round eyes, these should be used for cutting new threads, okay? We'll check you guys on the next episode.